Welcome to Fox Car Report. I'm Gary Gastelou. 50 years ago, Don Garlitz became the first drag racer to break 200 miles per hour in the quarter mile. And now at age 82, he's trying to hit that mark again, only this time in an electric car. Joining us today from Ocala, Florida, is Big Daddy himself. And I understand congratulations are in order. You haven't hit 200 yet, but you did break the record last week. 184 miles an hour in electric dragster. Is that right? That's exactly right. It had been 156 miles an hour. We raised it to 184, and we were quite uh, happy with that, as that's a very experimental car, lots of new technology, and uh, we think the 200 is just around the corner, and we think probably around the first couple of weeks in June we'll be doing that. Fifty years ago, did you think you'd still be strapping into a rail and breaking records at age 82? I'll tell you, you know, when we went that 201.34 in 1964, I never dreamed that someday I'd be doing that with batteries. And just to underlie, this isn't a safe sport at all. I understand you had a little trouble with the chute during one of the runs the other day, ended up in the pit. How was that? I understand you had a little trouble with the parachute the other day and ended up in the sand. Yeah, we, there was a little tip on the end of the parachute cable that never got clipped off, and we never noticed it. And on the, the naturally on the fastest run, it had to run off the drag strip. But it, it was a nice plowed field. There wasn't any problem. Just a lot of dust scared everybody. So why get into electricity now? You think it's the future drag racing or just a new challenge for you to take on? You know, you know, to me, drag racing was always something that a lot of people could do and not expensive and have a lot of fun at it. And they've driven that top fuel and funny car to unsustainable limits. You know, 330 miles an hour and 1,000 feet, $50,000 to make a run. You know, there's only a handful of people can do that anymore. And I'm trying to develop something that everybody can do and have a lot of fun at and, and actually spend more time racing than working on the car. And obviously this isn't just some rod you threw together in the garage. You're working with a team, a lot of experts in the field. Tell us about the car, Swamp Rat 37. Well, it is. It's, uh, it's all electric. It has uh, six GE electric motors. It has uh, real expensive batteries. They cost $150,000, but you only buy them once. After that, you just recharge them. A, a top fuel engine, it costs as much as that, and you got to rebuild it every run. And other than that, the car is basically like a fuel dragster. It's the uh, same chassis, uh, same rear end, same tires, feels the same. The difference is you're sitting on the starting line and everything is real quiet. You step on the go pedal, and I mean you take a ride. Because those electric motors, they make 2,000 horsepower, and it's available immediately. The batteries are 400 volts and 3,500 amps. What's the toughest part of making this work? Is it getting the motors to get the power down, or is it getting the batteries that can deliver the kind of uh, energy you need? Uh, the technology in the controllers, to get we're not getting all the power to the batteries, I mean all the power to the motors. We're only getting about 175 volts. We need the full 250 volts. So it's going to take a little different uh, technology on the controllers. It's all available. We, this was the experimental uh, first start. We'll get that all worked out. And uh, also the gearing is a little bit wrong. The motors were running up out of their peak power range. We'll change the rear end ratio and that take care of that. There's a lot of future in this car. You running through a transmission or the, is it direct drive from the electric motors? It's a two speed. We start with about a 5.13 and then shift into a 3.70. So we're going to change that to a 3.50 gear in the final drive and we'll be starting off with about a 5.08. One thing I noticed on a couple of the videos I saw on YouTube of the run, obviously, like electric cars, it doesn't make a lot of noise. I think all I heard was the tires screeching. Uh, you think that's an issue for electric drag racing? I mean, is the explosive nature of those uh, top fuelers part of the show? You think the electric cars could be a little louder and figure out a way to do that? You know, that's a good question. We had about 1,000 people at the test. We let some of our friends in and some of the public. And I was wondering if that was going to be an effect. The, the people were very impressed with the way the car moves off the line and the screeches the tires. You can hear it spin the tires when you shift gears. And uh, it, it makes beautiful burnouts. I don't believe that it will be that much different because one thing, you, there won't be any downtime for oil on the drag strip. You would actually be able to run these cars on live TV if you wanted to because I on the 184 run, 
I made a one start. The parachute that was not deployed. I made the loop, came right around around 184. Drove the car from the finish line back to the starting line. That's unheard of in racing today. And I guess quieter cars, you could put a track right in the middle of the suburbs and the neighbors wouldn't care, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, you're going to be going for 200 pretty soon, I guess. When's the next time you're putting this on the street? We're looking at the first couple of weeks in June as soon as we get the, uh, the batteries went back to uh, Denver to uh, have some uh, changes made on them. We, we blew a couple of the 800 amp fuses, so that has to be fixed. And they'll be bringing the batteries back. And sometime the first couple of weeks in June, we're going to go try again. Well, best of luck, Don. And listen, when I was getting ready for this interview today, I noticed that you and I share a birthday. Mine came a couple of years after yours. But I certainly <laughs> hope when I'm 82, I'm still driving, let alone driving the way you do. So best of luck uh, in the coming weeks. Thank you so much. I'm having a great time.